trying to get a little focus here. What I brought up is the uh, PDF files for the Renard Plus uh, instructions for the TR16 controller. The instructions for this do not always match our kits uh, in the order that they're assembled. The premise behind the order and the assembly is doing the, the shortest components first with the tallest components last. Uh, supplies for these components are not always exactly the same. The specifications as far as performance will be the same, but sometimes one's taller, one times, sometimes a different one's taller. So we do try to uh, keep the kits in the proper order. The first part we're going to assemble today is going to be, or parts, is actually the resistors for the TR-16. The first part we're going to be doing today is the one kilo ohm resistors. Now, you'll notice, let's see, zoom in here a little bit, clean this up a touch. Here, it should be five one kilo ohm resistors, and certainly that's what's in the bag. You'll notice the resistors have a bit of tape on each end. Uh, we'll need to Two things we need to peel the tape off or cut it off. Uh, there's nothing wrong with grabbing a pair of snips and just grabbing them right there at the tips and taking care of them. But five individual uh, axial resistors. We'll put four of these aside and bring back one. If you look on your instructions, the one kilo ohm resistors are for R1, R2, R8, R9, and R10. And I'm going to point out R1 right here. Now we're going to take this resistor and we're going to lay it up against the hole. So I want you to see where the holes are in relationship to the resistor body. Notice this resistor fills up that spot and we're going to need to bend the leads down on the very, very close to the body. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is bend our leads. So what I'm going to do is put my finger down there and I'm going to bend over 90 degrees. Same thing for the other side, which is probably a little bit more difficult since the other lead is in the way and bend down. Now you see when I get done, they're not, they're not perfectly straight. Well, that's fine. We can just squeeze them together a little bit. Now bring the PCB back up and find R1. Let's focus in on R1 again. Take the resistor. We're going to center it into the two holes just on either side of R1. And we're going to push it until it stops. And that's the first step to building this board. Now, did you notice I didn't worry about which direction it was. So you pushed it all the way to the bottom, flip it back over on the back side. Let's see if we can get it right here. We can see the leads. I need to change my focus there a bit. Now what we're going to do is go back in, bend the lead slightly out, and I lost my focus again. And the same thing on the other side, slightly out, just like that. So you can shake the board and the resistor stays put. Now, let's see, we'll turn this board up on edge so we can get it right in the camera's face. I want to change the focus a bit. Notice that the resistor is almost directly touching the board. There's nothing wrong with this for the types of boards we have because they're very durable and they're almost bulletproof. There are lots of high-tech soldering tips out there to tell you you've got to have the board a certain uh, the resistor a certain distance off the board to allow it to cool. We do not have that worry, so if you want to do it that way, you're welcome to. But there's no reason to be that picky. Now, notice when I inserted this resistor, I didn't worry about which side went in which hole. A resistor of this type, it this line, this lead here, and this lead here are the same. There's no plus or minuses to a resistor. They therefore they have no polarity. Polarity is important on some of our parts, but not resistors. So we're in, 
where the resistor is locked in. Now we simply need to solder the resistor in. All right, so we're going to bring our tip into the picture. I'm going to put a small amount of solder on this very, very fine tip. You'll watch it melt. I'm going to reach over and put it in my tip cleaner here and clean it off. Bring it back into the picture. You'll notice it's very, very clean. Notice that the tip has a bit of solder on it already. We're going to touch the donut. See the metal circle around the lead? Touch the donut. Heat it for two seconds. Feed the solder into the hole. Let the solder flow into the hole and let go. Now, I need to see what we did here. The light in here is not the greatest. And that is one of the most critical things when you're doing this, of being able to see what you've done. Now what I'm going to do is pick this up and look at it. All right, now we've got this first R1 soldered in. I'm going to attempt to move this in such a way and refocus to see if we can get you a good shot of what a good solder joint looks like. And use a resistor here to point out a couple of things. Notice where the ring was. The solder moves in a pattern down the side, almost like the slope of a volcano. Need this a little tilted because of the thing is bent. But there's not a blob. It doesn't go out and come back. It's a solid little cone all the way around. If you look at the other one, the other one has a bit too much solder on it. But notice it has the, the same shape at the bottom when it has this con this smooth edge shape going between the ring on the pcb or the pad and the and the lead you know you don't have a cold joint this one just has a bit too much solder on it so now we can set back and trim these off and clean things up and we talked about before about resistors not resting directly on the board. I'm going to attempt to, sh to get this back on edge again here and focus in. You'll notice I am doing R2 now and you'll notice, and let's see if we can get this really up into the camera here and possibly get a focus on it. Notice that R2 is sitting higher up off the board so it is possible to do it that way. Leads are spread out so now all I got to do is solder the leads in. So we'll flip the board back over so we can focus back in on what we need here. So now we focus back on, we're going to go back in. We're going to solder these two leads in. A little bit of solder on the tip, solder in the joint, touching both the pad and the wire, feed a little solder in, and let go. A little bit of wetness. Touch the joint and the wire, feed the solder in from the back side, and release. Solder joint, pair of snips, one, and two. And now we've got two resistors in, and we'll continue the ones, the remaining ones. Okay, so they're bent out. There they are from the top of the board. Let's see if I can get this back in the middle of the screen. There you go. I'm focusing it just a better. All right, so now flip it over. You'll see where the wires are. Ready to solder those in. Every time you finish a joint, you need to go back and inspect it. Um, now, I have a set of magnifying goggles, uh, something cheap I just picked up. Let's see if I can get a shot of these things for you. Let's see if we can back up the camera here just a touch. Uh, these are also called jeweler's uh, goggles, small, high uh, magnifying there, has one another increase in magnification on the end. This one even has a couple of LEDs on the 
on the side here uh, to try to light things up. They're not that real great, but this is what I use for inspecting parts. Um, just wear it as a, a small hat. Yes, <laughs> looks a little geeky, but it certainly does work. And these are all four very good joints. So put these aside. We're once again we're going to finally I'll trim these off just like the rest. Take our cutters and just slightly above the cone, we'll just snip them off. And one thing you want to make sure sometimes when you snip those leads, they'll go flying off. So you want to make sure they don't go flying off into something that's going to hurt you. So we have four of the five 1k ohm resistors in. Now we'll point something out. This is just a once again a real personal preference. Um, notice my resistors are the same direction. Does not matter. I just like things to be nice and neat. So last but not least we need to do R10. Form the lead. Make sure it's straight. Now we've got R10 formed. I'm going to slide it right through the hole. Hopefully you can see this. There we go. And push it down pretty much till it stops. Flip it over. Focus it in. And spread the leads back out slightly. And we're ready to solder it in. Now, one thing I'll mention, these resistors, we didn't check the value of the resistors before we started uh, working with them. And that is something that you really need to, to verify. Everybody makes mistakes once in a while. And so it's, it's possible that the value of the resistors could be wrong. Now, resistors have color codes on them. And it's great that if you can read the color codes, uh, I'm actually, I actually struggle with it a little bit because I can't see, I can't make out some of the colors every once in a while. Um, every manufacturer is slightly different and, and they're, they're sometimes very difficult to see. I actually prefer to just take my digital multimeter and measure them. Uh, in this particular case, I believe the color code for 1K is brown, black, red, and gold. Uh, it's, uh, you should have seen it in the, one of the previous screens because I did superimpose that on there. But the, the most sure solution is certainly to just measure them. If you all know, this particular resistor I'm heating longer than normal. Um, and it's not wanting to get in there. This is what we call a wagon wheel ground. Um, you're not just heating the ring about it, you're actually heating the entire ground plane underneath. And these are the ones that can give people more problems than any of those because they require so much heat. Uh, so that two to three second rule doesn't really work here. Let's see if I can inspect this real fast. Actually, that looks quite good. Let's see if we can get a picture of it here. Come on. There we go. Now... This one here is very, very mild solder. Uh, very little bit of mount, but it's nice and smooth. This one is a little more bulbous on the back end, and that, that, is, that is actually too much solder uh, on this real thin uh, joint. And basically go through and trim these off just like we did the others. And that's all for the one K ohm resistors back up here give you a complete shot of the board we'll show you each where they all went again we have R1 R2 R8 R9 and R10 and that concludes part two